Well, there is a point to those genealogies that were in our Bible reading this morning. But I'm not sure that there's a, a lot to be gained from that other than the point is Jesus was a direct descendant of David who was prophesied to be the Messiah. David, of course, was a direct descendant of Abraham, and Abraham, likewise, a direct descendant of Adam. And the close in Luke chapter 3 in our Bible reading was that Adam was the son of God. So therefore, Jesus was in lineage a descendant of Adam, a descendant of God. In reality, we know the Bible says that he was literally the only begotten Son of God. I want to begin today with what's wrong, not only with the church, but really in society today. What's wrong with the society and the church that we live in today? And don't get this in a negative sense. The title's rather negative. But what I would like to do is to present to you what we can do and what we should do as the church today. Turn with me if you're in your Bibles to the book of Jude. And in Jude's single chapter book, in verse 3, Jude says, Beloved, although I was eager to, you, eager to write to you about the common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend. Now, if you are reading from the King James Version, your version will say to earnestly, earnestly contend for the faith what that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed long ago, who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality denying our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Jude says that he intended to write to them about the common salvation. In other words, his intent when he first thought to write to the Christians was to write a, a nice, lovely letter of endearment. But he says, I find it necessary to write to you to earnestly contend for the faith. Friends, it is a responsibility that each and every one of us has to have in our daily lives. We must, each of us, individually, earnestly contend for our faith. We have to do together. The true church is the one, and I say church in a singular form, the one church that Jesus established in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, where he said, I will build my church. My church. I want you to notice Jesus only built one church. Now, I'm not saying that there are not different separate local congregations, but he built one church. So the question must be asked, which church is the New Testament church? Which church and what does that church look like? Friends, I want to introduce to you that when Jude is writing, there were local bodies of believers that caused Jude to have concern. The true church, regardless of its name, providing it's biblical, is the church that follows the teaching of the Bible in its entirety. There are many names, most of them simply descriptive, found in the New Testament. 
There's the name Church of Christ. There's the name Church of God, Church of the, Church of the Firstborn. Many times Christians were simply followers of the way. There are all kinds of descriptive names. And providing a name is biblical, sometimes there's the church at Ephesus. Sometimes there's the church at Smyrna. They're all descriptive names of Christians who met in local assemblies. I want you to look around today at the divisions that divide Christians. I think we could trace it back to the first century when Jude wrote to Christians to earnestly contend for the faith. That was once, once for all delivered to the saints. The only standard, friends, the only standard that we have is the Bible. And it must be the Bible that is used as the inspired word of God. I have a question to pose as we look at this, as we kind of begin this series. Uh, can, we, can we allow for room for opinions? You know what, they, what is said about opinions. Well, opinions are like a belly button. We've all got one. You know what? I don't need to see yours. They say they all stink, and I... I'm inclined to believe that. I have opinions. I'm full of them. Ask my kids. My children have opinions. And they're different from my opinions. One might like extra ketchup on their fish. Someone even got out the mustard for fish. Now, I don't know who did that the other night. That is disgusting. I am not a mustard eater. In my opinion, mustard is one of the worst tasting things ever invented. Every once in a while, I can tolerate a little bit. But we all have opinions. And what do they matter in the grand scheme of things other than what we think we'd like? But can our opinions guide us? Well, you know what? There are times in my life that I have allowed my opinions to guide me. And it hasn't always worked out well. So we have to have a standard. Allow me to introduce you to you the builder's best friend, also known as the tape measure. I used to think it was the hammer. I used to think that a hammer was the builder's best friend. But let me tell you why the tape measure is the builder's best friend. A hammer is a great tool. But I've also noticed that everybody carries hammers and a lot of different hammers. I used to think there was a standard length for a hammer. And that's not the case. I've always, in my lifetime of building buildings, I've always used an East Wing hammer. East Wing makes their hammers, their framing hammers, exactly 16 inches long. But I have come to discover that other companies make hammers different lengths and different styles. Someone gave me a hammer one time that held a nail in the back of it with a couple of pressure pointed balls, spring loaded balls. You could snap a, a, a nail in the back of it and it was a hammer designed for a man who did metal roofs back in the day when they put them on with nails and only had one hand. It was short and very different. But a tape measure. A tape measure is something we all carry. Now we can get different brands. We can get different names on our tape measures. For years I've carried, I would say for over 20 years now, I've carried a Stanley tape measure. One very similar to the one in the picture, silver on the outside with the yellow dot. That's my brand of tape measure. Are they the best? Yeah, they've come out with better tape measure since. But that's what I've always carried. But it doesn't matter if you carry an Irvin tape measure, a Mastercraft tape measure. 
It doesn't matter if you carry a Stanley tape measure. If you're building in the United States and you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, contractors building supply, and you get a tape measure, regardless of where you got it or what brand it is, every tape measure measures the same length. Now the point of this is, Every tape measure does measure the same length. So if I tell if I tell Joe Miller, Joe, I need a board seven feet six inches long. Joe is going to take his tape measure and he is going to measure a board seven feet six inches long. He's going to cut the board and he's going to hand it to me and it's going to fit exactly where I want it to fit. We all use the same standard. We understand the need for that in building houses, barns, and other structures. Don't, don't get me started on, on metrics, Don. That's a, that's a mistake right there. We're changing the standard in the building industry, but let's leave that for another day. 